Blue Your Wit Up with Talk Story TV. This is the Author School Show, and I have with me this morning Garrett Robinson, and he's going to tell us about, talk to us about, building an author's platform. So, Hi, Julia. Um, go ahead, Garrett. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, good to be on the show. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Garrett Robinson. I'm a self-published author. I've been doing it for about three years. Uh, when I started, I was working a nine-to-five job like everybody else out there. Uh, but I started writing, and within five months, I left my job and started doing self-publishing full-time. And now it's it's my uh, entire household income, actually. My wife was also working a job but starting in January, I was able to to hire her on to work for me and help manage my online presence. So I've been doing uh, I've been doing fairly well with it. And tell us, I don't exactly know what an author's platform is. Could you tell us more about that? Sure. I mean, the best definition I've ever heard for an author's platform is literally what it sounds like. It is a place from which you can speak. Uh, if you had a platform in a big speaking hall, it would be the place from which you were talking to your audience. A platform is just exactly that. So it does mean different things for different people. Certain people, their platform is their Twitter following. I don't have a really big Twitter following. Certain people, their email, uh, their their email list is their platform. And I have a fairly big email list, and I also have uh, a YouTube channel. YouTube channel is actually probably where I would say my biggest platform is, but it is going to vary based on the author based on the type of books that you write and based on where your audience is. I think that that is the most key point is that you want to find where your audience is and build your platform in that space. And by where your audience is, you mean where they are, where they hang out online? Exactly. Or, you know, in, in the in real life as well, uh, if you are the type of person who likes doing live events and conventions, for example, which which I very much am. I've been to uh, several conferences and, and conventions in the last uh, in the last year. You want to make sure that you are putting your effort and your time and your appearances in the right place. You don't want to be trying to promote on Facebook if your audience is, let's say, uh, above a certain age range and male. You don't want to be promoting on Tumblr if your audience is not, you know, mostly teen, early 20s, um, and primarily women. Uh, different, you need to look at the demographics of, of where people hang out online and in real life and, and sort of appeal to those places that best match your book's market. So if you're, fly, you're writing about fly fishing, you'd want to find out where all the fly fishermen... Exactly, hang exactly. Out. And there's blogs out there. There's health and fitness blogs. There's outdoorsman blogs and everything. And, you know, you, it's the sort of thing where you, want to, you also want to communicate where, where you have a passion. If you are writing a book about fly fishing, let's say, and it's instruction for fly fishing... I mean, you better be writing that book because you actually like fly fishing, you know? If you, <laughs> right. if, you, if you don't enjoy that, then go write a different book. But if you do enjoy that, then you will probably enjoy reading somebody's blog and website about fly fishing. And so go to their website, hang out with them, talk to them, comment on their blog, it, offer any advice that you have. You know, a good blogger will always invite feedback and contribution from his audience. If you can become an audience member that they actually remember and know the name of, then when you do something, they're likely to want to to help you out. Actually, that's really how I got started. Are you uh, are you familiar with the self publishing podcast? No. Who by who? Uh, it's by Sean Platt, Johnny B. Truen, and David Wright. And they are one of the biggest podcasts on self publishing in the world, if not the biggest. And they are, I started listening to them three years ago, and they're fantastic. Their advice is great. I became a fan of theirs, and I started reading all of their books. This, this was just how I sort of like became acquainted with them. I started reading all of their books, and I was like, your books are great, and I would always leave them a review on Amazon. But because I'm very, very attentive to spelling and grammar, I would sometimes catch typos, you know, because they weren't 
they weren't at that point quite at the level of hiring like the top top notch professional editors that that they are now in fact they've actually hired me sometimes uh back when i was still doing a lot of freelance editing but i would send them typos and stuff and they would always be like oh my gosh thank you thank you for letting us know and they would update their book and then they would put it online so when i started writing and publishing my own works they were very very happy to let their audience know about it because i had i had inserted myself into that space as sort of uh more than an audience member like a contributing audience member if that yeah if that's the right term that does make sense so yeah. what are your books about I write genre fiction, mostly fantasy. My two biggest series are our fantasy series. I have a series called The Realm Keepers. The first book in that one is called Midrealm, and that's for much more of a teen, young adult audience. And then I, uh, my new series, new, uh, it's you know out since September of last year. Uh, there's two books out. It's uh, the first book is called Nightblade. Second book is called Mystic, and I'm working on the third book, Darkfire, right now. And that's not ex it, it it's more geared toward an adult audience there's nothing there's nothing that i think any any parent would find objectionable for their child to read but it's it's not as the other one is very very flight of fancy you know mm -hmm. um so that is the type of stuff that i love to read that's the type of stuff i love to write i have written in a few other genres i have a uh thriller um a zombie comedy book and uh, a literary novel that I wrote last year, which is about the music industry, but it's actually sort of a metaphor for indie authors versus the traditional publishing industry. And that one's called Rebel Yell. But honestly, when I publish a book in a different genre, people usually go, oh, okay, my audience, that's not my audience. I've built a yeah. platform that cares about fantasy, you know? So when I publish a book that's not fantasy, they kind of go, well done. <laughs> When's the next fantasy book coming? We want that. Okay, so that's how. Okay, and where's your website in case somebody is interested? One of our viewers are interested in fantasy, or they just want to look at how you do things. Sure, it's GarrettBRobinson.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. And on my blog, I always post whatever I'm doing. Uh, my new, anytime a new book comes out. Anything, basically anything that I do new online. I, I have a podcast myself and episodes always go up on there. And then also, like I said, uh, one of the biggest places that I build an audience is my YouTube channel. And I have a lot of interaction with fans on there and my videos are also always, always on my website. So that is the best place to stay up to date with what's happening. Yeah, and I'd just like to mention here, I believe YouTube is the third largest search engine. That is correct. So that's probably a very good place to get a platform. Well, thank you for being with us this morning, Garrett. Thank you so much, Julie. It's been fun. All right, and we'll see you online. All right.